This video is a follow-on from the previous video where we showed how we can draw a square by moving a turtle appropriately. In this video we show how we can draw a square using a Python loop and turtle graphics. This program is one of the two programs we looked at in the last video and I'm going to pick up the execution of this from this slide where you can see it's asking the turtle to move forward by 200. So keep your eye on the turtle and you can see that it will when this program executes this line move the turtle forward 200. This will then tell the turtle to rotate to its left by 90 degrees. There you can see the turtle rotate rotating left. This line then moves the turtle forward 200, so keep your eye on the turtle and you can see that's happening. And then here we tell the turtle to rotate left again by 90 degrees, so watch the turtle and you can see it turns left. Now I won't go on any further, but what I will do, I will point out here that these two statements are the same as these two which in turn are the same as these two and then finally we can see we have a repeat of the two program statements again here. So we have got one, two, three, four repetitions and therefore what we can do, we can improve this program by introducing a loop. So considering this program again, we know already that we have the repeating of the statements as shown here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take just two of these and I'm going to put these two inside an appropriate loop, a repetition, an iteration, whatever you would like to call it. In other words, something that's going to continually repeat these program statements here. So let's have a look at that computer program and you can see it is appearing now. So compare these lines with these and you can see they are identical. So there's a lot of similarity between the programs. But if you come here now and look at these two lines, you can see I've put those here and I've put them inside this loop. And you can see they're inside the loop by the fact that I've indented them both. If we now consider what we have here, we have a loop that's going to execute a number of times. And the question is, how often will this loop execute? Well, you can see here I've used for i in range and in the brackets here I've put 4. So we're going to execute these program statements 4 times and I'll illustrate that execution on the next slide. But the key is, you can see here, I executed these two lines one, two, three, four times, and I had to write them out four times, as you can see here, whereas over here I only had to write those two lines out the once, and I've put them inside a loop. And this loop will cause these two to execute four times. So if we consider this slide, we know that for this computer program, this will import the turtle module. This will create an instance of the turtle. This will set the shape of the turtle to that of a turtle. This creates the screen and this will lift the pen up so when the turtle moves, it will not leave a trace behind. After we've executed this line of code, which lifts the pen up, we then execute this loop. And we need to consider what this loop will do for us. And I would recommend you look at the range function in one of my other videos if you're unsure as to what it does. But I'm going to go through it here. So what we can see is that this loop here will set i in the range and here we have the value of 4. Now what we're going to look at is what does i become as we execute this loop the first time. Well I'm showing a schematic diagram for that here. It'll create an integer that will have the value of 0 because what this range will do it'll produce a number of 0 when it executes for the first time with this loop structure and then we go into here and we execute this and of course what this will do it'll move my turtle forward 200 so keep your eye on the turtle and you can see it moves forward 200. It then comes to this line which will make the turtle move 
to its left by 90 degrees. So look at the turtle again and you can see it is rotating to its left by 90 degrees. Then of course we execute this loop again and now I will take up the next value in the range. So keep your eye on this schematic animation here and you can see that the I will increase to 1. Consequently, we now go and execute this line and this will make the turtle move forward 200 as you can see. Then we execute this which will tell the turtle to move left by 90 degrees. There's the turtle moving left. We then execute this again, this loop again, and I will now change if you come down here and look at this schematic animation to 2. We then enter the loop and we execute this, which is telling the turtle to move forward 200. So keep your eye on the turtle and there you can see it moving forward 200. Then we come here to this and what this will do, it'll move the turtle left by 90 degrees, the turtle's left that is. So keep your eye on the turtle and you can see it moves 90 degrees. Then of course we execute the loop again. So keep your eye on the schematic diagram here and you can see I now has the value of 3. We then go back and execute this line which causes the turtle to move forward by 200 and then we execute this line which causes the turtle to rotate to its left by 90 degrees so keep your eye on the turtle and you can see it moves left by 90 degrees now of course we consider this loop again but because this says 4 it means we don't go as far as the 4 so what this will produce, it'll produce 0, 1, 2, 3, but it will not produce the 4. So what we can now say is the program will end, and if we look at this schematic bit here, what will happen, the i and its value will disappear because the program has ended. So what this bit of the code has done, it's caused these two lines to execute four times but we have to remember that i would have taken up the value of zero one two three it wouldn't have gone as far as the four now if you think of this program you can see for this bit of the code we in fact didn't really use the i did we see the i wasn't used in the loop at all now there's nothing to stop us using it in other programs but we didn't use it here we just had this set up to enable these two lines to execute the four times and when i showed the loop being executed the first time i showed this schematic diagram here where i was set to zero now in reality i will be an integer object that is bound to the name i and of course we will find that the turtle will move forward 200 as we've already shown and I'm repeating that here and then of course this will turn it to the left by 90 degrees and now I will take up the value of 1 and I'm showing that appearing here now how this bit of the code works I don't think we should worry about at this time just accept that I is a variable and this variable we can see changes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 the fact that I've said in lots of the other videos in this playlist I will be a name that's bound to an instance of an object is correct but I would just when you see an I being used in a piece of code like this just think of it as a variable as it appears in many other programming languages otherwise you'll get hung up every time you're writing the smallest of programs we are just showing here i is changing as we go through the loop but it never gets as far as four it's not one two three of course if i was now to come to the program we're looking at here and remove this line then the default for the turtle will be the pen is down and of course the way in which it moved would leave a trace behind so we'd have it drawing a square and of course this square has been achieved by repeating these two lines four times whereas in the previous program we didn't have these within a loop we had them following each other so we had four lots of these two in a sequence whereas here i've just put one lot in a loop in an iteration in a repetition loop iteration repetition meaning the same thing if you consider this computer program you can see i've removed the pen up 
I'm not asking the turtle to lift the pen up, so by default, the pen will be down. And when this program executes, these four lines are going to be responsible for placing the turtle here at the origin on the screen. This loop will now be responsible for executing these two lines four times. So if you keep your eye on the turtle, you should see that it will perform the drawing of a square. And you can see it's moving forward and turning appropriately and there you can see the square has been drawn. Of course, a problem with this computer program, the square is always drawn in the same place. It always starts from the origin here, so the square will always be as you see it here. What if you wanted to put the square over here or over here? Well, you would alter the position, the starting position of the turtle and let it move from that position. Now we're going to look at that in the videos that are coming up, but also if you consider this loop, if I was to stick this loop inside a function, I could call that function every time I wish to draw a square. And if in the call of that function I also was able to specify where I wanted the turtle to start, then I can arrange for the square to be drawn anywhere within the screen. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.